I'm sure you're thinking about a lot of other things too. But um, it's our first art time together and I've been thinking a lot about Easter and I really want to do some Easter artwork. And so I'm thinking about the story of Easter and what part is the most important part of it? I mean, it is all. It is all very, very important. But there is one part that I would say is maybe the most important part and that's when they find the empty tomb because up until then Jesus was just a really great prophet to a lot of people but then when he finally ra rose from the dead it was like what he said was actually true. They finally realized this. Let me read you a little bit of this passage. Um, so in Matthew 28, it says, After the Sabbath at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, go and going into the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. And so to me, this is the big moment, the most amazing moment of this whole story is the fact that we know that he's real because everything he said um, has officially come true. And so um, I just thought this, this is what we should be doing our artwork about. Um, we often do it about the cross and I, I often do cross artwork around Easter. So I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. The cross there was a lot of great stuff that happened there but the big moment the really big moment is when they found the empty tomb so today's art project is going to be inspired by this scripture verse about the empty tomb so that we know that he conquered death and you have a reminder of that or you can maybe share your artwork with someone maybe someone you've been separated from a little bit you can mail it to them and have this great reminder of what Jesus has done for us so let's get started one of the first things we always discuss when we make our art is which direction should our paper go. Today, you get to choose. The first drawing I will do, I will complete with pen and I will use my paper in the vertical style or like the paper's taking a shower. And then the second project that I'll do, I will complete with watercolor paint and I will do that project in the horizontal or landscape mode or like it's going to take a bath. So you may choose which way you want your paper today. As I mentioned, there will be two different options on how to finish your artwork. This is the first option and it's using a pen. I have this option in case you don't have any paint at your house or in case you just don't feel like messing with paint right now. And this option is perfectly fine. We will go over some different uses of our pen and it's a nice, clean, simple version. You could also finish this version with markers or crayons or colored pencils if you have those objects available. The second version I will complete with watercolor paint and I will give you some tips for using watercolor paint. Please do not feel like you have to do both of these projects. This is simply a choice you get to make. Do you want to finish it with pen? Or you could add colored pencil or markers or crayons. Or would you like to use watercolor paint? And it probably will also depend on what your parents are okay with. So check with them before we get started. Step one, starting on the right, draw a big hill. So I'm going to start with my pencil on the right side of the page and I want this hill to be a little jaggedy. Um, also, don't forget, draw light until you got it right. So I keep my pencil line pretty light and then I'll go over it a little bit darker so that you can see it hopefully. Later I will go over these lines with pen. Step 2. Draw a second smaller hill and I also put a little rock at the bottom of this hill. Thank you. 
Step 3. Draw an oval for the stone and an upside down U for the opening of the cave. Don't forget to add a little thickness to that rock that was rolled away. The rock would not have been completely flat, so that's what I just added. It was a little bit of thickness to that rock. Step 4. Draw two or more hills going off to the left and then one going off to the right. Like I said, you can draw more hills or you could choose to draw less hills. It's always great to have options when you do art. The last thing that I'm going to do before I use my pen to go over the pencil lines is use my eraser to clean up any stray pencil lines that I made. I have an electronic eraser, so that's what you see me using now. The very last step, we add the three crosses off in the distance. Don't want to forget that. decided to add a few more rocks towards the bottom of the paper. That's completely optional, but I just thought it was something that would make my design look a little bit nicer. You now have a choice. Do you want to finish your artwork using pen, or do you want to finish it using watercolors? If you plan to use pen, then just follow along right now. If you'd like to use watercolors, stay tuned and I will show you what to do with your watercolors. I am using a fine tip black pen to go over my pencil lines. If you plan to paint, you can still go over your pencil lines, just make sure that you're using a waterproof marker to do so. Some lines that I will be using is um, directional lines that are called hatching lines. You'll see me use them to uh, infer shadows. Right now I'm just coloring in a uh, place on the tomb that would be completely dark because it would be the opening to the tomb and so inside we know there would be no electricity so it would be completely dark so those are just small lines going together really close on the thickness of the cave wall there I used that hatching that I was talking about and that's when you do lines in a direction to imply shadow and I'm using the same thing on the side of the rocks. Now sometimes in order to increase the depth of shadow I go a different direction on my hatching which is called cross hatching. I also added a little bit of hatching behind each hill to add a little shadow and then I lastly added some shadow behind where the stone was rolled away. And that's about it for the pen usage on this project. Now if you want you can start adding color, you can use markers, crayons, color pencils or you can follow along here while I use watercolor paint. The first thing I do is I add water, clean water with a large brush to the sky part of my painting. And the reason I do this is it's a method called wet on wet and it allows the colors to flow on the page. You can see the orange flowing there now. And this will create more of a fun sunset effect. You can move the colors on that wet surface and you can add colors and um, if it gets a little dry though it doesn't work so you have to add more water um, and you got to be careful with adding more water with watercolor sometimes you can add too much or it doesn't work out quite as well and as you can see I'm just pushing the colors around and trying to get it looking the way that I want it to look so have fun with it and make that sunset look the way you want 
and it doesn't even have to be a sunset sky that was just what I decided to do you could also do a blue sky or a gray sky um, whatever you feel like it would look like on Easter morning Next, I'm going to paint the opening to the tomb, and I'm mixing a little brown with a little black, very little black. Black can be overwhelming in a painting, so you don't want that area totally black. So I just put a little black, and that was very little black, and you saw how black it made it. And then I'm going to add a little more brown over top of that so that it looks kind of like a brown black. Um, black, like I said, is just overwhelming in a watercolor painting, so you don't really want much black black in a watercolor painting. And then after that, I'm going to start adding um, brown to the first hill. Um, I'm going to use a method on this where I blot some of the paint off. So I'm just loosely applying this paint really quick. And then I will blot some of that paint off with a paper towel. And then I'll add in some of the black um, with a paper towel to create a textured effect and it's a really cool look in the end um, so it's an option for you but it's not something you have to do if you're painting along with me right now and you do not want to blot paint off and you don't want to add paint on that's fine um, it's just something that I thought was a cool idea that I wanted to show you hey look what you can do so I will take my paper towel and I'll just blot off a little bit of that paint you can see it's already adding some texture but in my opinion that's looking a little too white and you don't want it to look white because it's dirt and dirt doesn't typically have white in it so I'm adding some black to my paper towel and then I'm going to dab that onto the hill and I add the black to the paper towel and not onto the hill itself so that it doesn't become overwhelmed with black. Again, remember black is very strong and you don't want it to overtake your painting. So you can always add more, but it's hard to take it away. Now I'm going back in with some more brown and I'm trying to apply the color a little more richly than I did to the hill itself. I'm trying to make the stone that rolled away there um, a little bit darker than the hill of the tomb itself just so that it stands out. And now I'm going in and adding some color to the ground and um, those rocks there at the bottom. At this point, you don't have to be super neat. You can paint right over the rocks and you can add details later. Then I pick a different brown for um, the next hill just to add some variance. And as you guys know, we've discussed before, but things get a little lighter as they go away from us. Um, that brown that I chose was a little too orange in my opinion, so I'm adding some of the other brown that I was using, the darker brown, over top of this brown. And then adding in to that hill, um, that small hill that was right next to the very first hill, and adding more um, character to those rocks. Next, I'm going to add color to the back hills, and because those hills would be farther away from us, we want to make those lighter in appearance. Uh, another way you could have handled this is to make everything really dark because of the sun coming in and this image being backlit, but I think that would have made it a lot harder. So I decided to go with the typical uh, atmospheric perspective, is what it's called whenever something is lighter farther away it's the particles in the atmosphere making things a little bit lighter as they go away from us and so um, I'm trying to make those hills in the back a little bit lighter than the ones in the front the thing is that I'll realize and you'll see me correct it later is the hill on the left the back hill on the left is lighter than the back hill on the right right now and that shouldn't be that way so I'll, I will correct that later and I'm adding a little bit of darkness and I, once again that is not black that I added for my darkness but I added a little bit of darkness um, which is brown to the side of the rock and that finishes it up for our painting I hope you enjoyed this project and I look forward to doing another project with you soon